Hello, everyone, and welcome to another unbelievable episode of Shanaz Cast. Your host for tonight, Bob, Corey, Nick, and Todd. The four of us together again. God damn it, it feels good to be together again. Indeed. It's been so long. Corey, how are you? Oh, hey. Nick, how are you? Oh, doing well. Todd, how are you? Stupendous. Oh, I thought he was tremendous. Really just pile on with the oh hey. Oh no. <laughs> I am stupendous, <laughs> tremendous, fabulous. Oh no, I will not. <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen. Let's get housekeeping out of the way, shall we? Gentlemen, gentlemen and Corey. All right. If you are new to the podcast, thank you for joining us. If you are back again, love having you. You can follow us and watch any, watch or listen to any of the previous episodes out on all of the social media services, especially audio, audio wise, wherever you can get a podcast. Out on social media, you can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, and Twitch, and TikTok, all at Schnozcast. You can email us at schnozcast at gmail.com if you're a writer and you want to see us right back, which we will, <laughs> or you can call or text us anytime, day or night, including right now at 618 Shocker. A writer! Shocker! Hey, Dad, I can't see without my glasses. Is that Bill Shakespeare over there? That's right. Bill Shakespeare will respond back to you in iambic pentameter. Don't, don't, don't tempt me. I will. You will what? I'll iambic, iambic pentameter that bitch up. Mmm. We like that. Maybe. I like them uh, french fried potatoes. Mmm. <laughs> See, that's some Sling Blade fans. Some over Sling Blade. Here. Uh, hey, Corey, back. have you seen Sling Blade? Jesus Christ. I have. <laughs> <laughs> nice try to. Uh, <laughs> you're trying to fuck that last episode right into the pussy of the next one, huh? Exactly. Yeah. This is a great start. That was my especially behind the back pass attempt. <laughs> Gentlemen, it was only a few episodes ago, I feel like, when I mentioned that uh, I had been to the the vintage shop, the retro vintage collectible shop. Thank you, sir. Uh, and and I think when I was there, I was L- Lori pointed out that uh, they actually had one of my high school yearbooks from I think my freshman year <laughs> in the vintage shop. Was it a shoppy? Uh, Ye old shop? No. Was no. it was it ye old shoppy? No, it was not. <laughs> Did you have to go <laughs> and blow the dust out of it? Like, how much is this and tweak? <laughs> and tweak. <laughs> when I walked in, I did have to say hello. Yeah. Can you hear me, old man? Can you hear me? No, no. They they're a great shop that has a whole bunch of shit. From uh, they actually had a legitimately f- fantastic fifties. Uh, a kitchen table Clan chair hood? set that was amazing if you needed it, but I did not. I walked out of there today, though, uh, with only one item, which was a uh, a book about the Three Stooges written by Mo Howard uh, that I could not turn down for $8. Word. Mo wrote a book? Uh, he was yeah, the brains 100%. of that operation. He was the brains of the operation for sure. Yes. Yes. And I'm like, a uh, Mo Howard book that I'd never seen? Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, you know who else was brilliant was Joe. He he doesn't get he doesn't get the billing he deserves. Really, Joe? Joe? No, no, Joe. Oh, Joe Guido. Well, love him too. <laughs> Which Joe are we talking about? Joe Biden? No, Joe, the third the, the the third replacement for Corey. First it was it was Curly, Curly Joe. Then it was Sh- then it was Shemp, and then Joe. Curly Joe. He was Curly Joe. Yes, he wasn't just. I thought he was just Joe. No, he was <laughs> Curly Joe. Who was Curly? Come then? on, man. He was just Curly. Was curly, Curly, Mike? Cur- curly. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. Who was- okay. <laughs> Listen, it was Curly Joe. I thought it was it was Curly, was the original. He That's true. And then there was Shemp. Right. And then, and then there's Shemp, Joe. No, not just, no, he, he went by Curly Joe. Curly no, Joe Besser. Joe. I call him White well, listen, Joe. If we're talking about what he went by versus what you called him, I think that we have hit the crux of the uh, the gap here in our conversation. Okay, I called him. I called him Elephant Socks. So, 
<laughs> the fuck doesn't matter at this point. Let's move on. Here we go with the episode title. Here we go. <laughs> Curly Joe. Thank you, Corey. So, I so have nothing else to add to that. Two things. Yes. Uh, one, to enrage Corey. And the second. Oh, fantastic. Because sec- I'm not already not enraged I, well, enough. Well, I mean, I'm not involved in this enrage. <laughs> no, no, no. Not, not enraged like we've seen in past episodes where the really, like, the the, the volume goes up, the blood is boiling. Yeah, it, no. it's, it's a wonder to behold. Like no, when you talk only, about his lifts. He only gets that way with Todd. I was just going to say, he only gets that way with Todd. <laughs> When he finally breaks, he's like, "You know, fucking Todd." And that, that's, those are like the best moments. That is, that is true. With that me, he just gets annoyed with me that for is, my friends, uh, Frazier and Seinfeld my, references. In my stomach, I'm just like, mm, 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 mm. "That is just like a del- <laughs> delicious." When I hear that, no, what what you reminded me of when you What's said that? when you said what you and Todd were just talking about, okay, is and and this is a preface to a question I'm asking him, so please don't bridle too much, Corey. Um, but. An episode of Frasier. Okay. Don't Hopefully play. one of them dies soon. Yeah. <laughs> Based in Seattle. So. Um, they did, by the way. He goes. He oh, goes, really? Yeah, Frasier's dad. Uh, the actor yeah. who plays that passed oh, away. That's not a big big part. So Fra- Frasier's, Frasier's dad said, didn't you just recently get a pen or something from him? He goes, what? He goes, from Mo Howard. You got some kind of pen you paid a bunch of money for? He goes, it's Noel Coward, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that, that's actually good. So, and then the second, so the second thing I wanted to yeah. ask you was, yeah. have you watched the new, the reboot, the the or oh, the Frasier reboot? Yeah. Well, it's not a reboot as much as it's a, a, a three. Yet. It's a three boot. <laughs> no, they're not restarting the series. It's the him taking over from where the last series left off, where he left Seattle to go to where was it, San Francisco or something? Yeah. I have not. I, I have heard nothing but shitty things about it. Really? And I and I'm like I don't listen, and, and I'm being totally serious when I say this. Yeah, totally serious. Mm-hmm. Listen, my go to when Pluto TV is working on my television, which, which by the way, if the Pluto TV folks are listening, Pluto TV on a Samsung television uh, sucks because if you leave it on Pluto TV and then your TV goes into sleep mode, and then the next night you go back in, Pluto TV is like. We can't figure out how the app works. You, you're going to have to come back another time. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? What do you mean you can't figure I, out how the app works? You have to reboot it? I don't understand. You can't, you can't reboot the app. It's on the television. So what? How you start a TV, doesn't fix it. So uh, like, uh, it's like every other night or every third night that I get to watch uh, Frasier on Pluto TV. Okay. Because there is a Frasier channel on Pluto TV. And uh-huh. when Pluto TV is working, which... Again, Pluto TV folks, if you're listening, is only like every two or three nights, and fuck you. Uh, my go-to is Frasier on the on the. Uh, I, I want to say the channel is like Sitcom Legends. Okay. On Pluto TV every night. You don't have Hulu. I do, but I I want to be surprised at the episode that's going to play. <laughs> okay. And by the way, uh, you want the experience that you had as a young man. Yeah, because like that you turn I, I TV grew on up in the 70s. And TV right. decides yeah, what you're yeah, watching, whatever, not you. Whatever's on TV is what you see. <laughs> you don't get to pick what you want to watch. The television tells me what to watch. Yeah. You turn There's channels, you're like, chunk, 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 chunk. Yeah. Exactly. So that, okay. that's the experience that I enjoy. So I go back to Pluto TV, and I'm like, put it on Sitcom Legends. It's all Frasier, like, back-to-back from, like, 11 p.m. Uh-huh. Eastern until 4 a.m. Eastern. Okay, so so and that's what I go to sleep with. Okay, so why is this um, tying into how you won't watch the new Frasier? Uh, because I I don't want to ruin Frasier for myself. I'd rather Gum Legends. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Was that you, Corey? It was uh, the Ghost of Bob ghost Rankin of Past from from. Sorry, I I had to turn the volume on real quick. Back to the present. Um, no, I would rather I would rather just keep that at a distance and let somebody convince me that it's worth watching and I'm going to stick with the the OG Frasier. So so post I'm, cheers. I'm, I'm, I'm of the uh, same mindset. I have don't, a new grievance now. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. But, We're going to get to that. But don't don't you think yeah that um a lot of people would have had the same thought process in the first couple episodes of Frasier when it um, was all about a, re, a spinoff from Cheers. Like, wouldn't you think, like, I don't want to ruin Cheers. This is going to be weird. I mean, the same comments that you had. Yes, but 
to that, I have two two rebuttals. Yep. Uh, first, I will say, um, <clears throat> I've watched the trailers for that show, and it, there was not one funny minute or second in those trailers. Secondly, I'm waiting for someone like yourself to go, I've watched it. It's re- actually really good. The trailers don't do it justice. Well, that hasn't happened for me yet, so I'm not fucking watched. So I will say um, that I watched the trailers as well, and it looked hokey. Horrific. It looked very hokey. Yeah. Um, I think there's going to be a little little bit of growing pains. There's been a lot of time since Frazier has ended. Yep. Uh, and he's a very old man now. Um, sure. Very old. And so, much like Todd, <laughs> he's ancient. He's, what? He's, I'm younger an, than you. Of an advanced age, like Todd Dillon. But for someone that likes the character of Frazier, that is the longest running character on TV, um, th- there's almost some get behind that you're gonna have to do. Nope, nope. And I will tell you why. Because because Frazier, Frazier wasn't the best character. Frazier, the show, mm-hmm. was the best character. Was the best vehicle for Frazier. For Kelsey Grammer, far more than Cheers was. Kelsey Grammer was a supporting character on Cheers. Correct. If they're going to top Frasier, I, I would be fucking surprised. But it is it is look, a high bar. To your credit, it is yeah. Frasier. No, no, it, it, it is, but without any of the same writers, without uh, a lot of the same cast. Uh, uh, without fact, Eddie. If anyone from the original Frasier cast is going to be back, they're going to be back as, like, it's going to be Roz as a special guest. And or Lilith. I, I've watched the trailer, I've read the reviews, and I would rather exist with my enjoyment of what I know to be good, which is Frasier. So, but this is also still Frasier. Again, there, there, <laughs> there, are, there are many examples of uh, follow-on shows. Uh, I loved MASH. The show after MASH, after MASH is over, was fucking god-awful. God awful. Okay, so okay. not worth what's your match? time. So completely wrecked my view of those characters and took me a bro? long time. You you are to a, get over it. You are a high I'm yard. A purist. You're a high yardstick. And, Wait a minute. And, and and I feel like in regards to Frazier, I, I am as well. Um, but I will I will leave you with this. Sure. I watched the first couple episodes. Yep. They're not as horrendous as the previews seem. Gotcha. There were funny moments that I laughed out loud. All right. There were nods. To the show, of course. Okay. And there was a moment that I teared up. All right. See, that that's the feedback that I, until the second I had not gotten. So watch a few more. I will. And, and I want to see how it goes. if it keeps getting better. I want to see how it goes, because I think it will. I think there's some growing pains, it, and I think If it's, you're going to get behind it, then I will jump on board. I'm not. Because I, tr- I value your opinion. Yeah, I'm not going to give but, my 100% stamp of approval right now, because you're a tough critic. But Clarifying question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Was Trapper John MD a prequel to MASH? Or is that a... It, it, no. It was after? It was after. Yeah, because Trapper went home. Remember? Trapper John went yeah. home from MASH, and uh, then they did a spinoff with Rain Ro- Wayne Rogers, who was the actor who played Trapper John, and he got his own show. And it, and it was much better than MASH. No, go fuck yourself. It wasn't. <laughs> Uh, that that tells me that you never watched Mash. <laughs> hey, look, you're not gonna fuck with me. Wasn't it, Mash? Wasn't Mash uh, uh, the after of of Hogan's Heroes? Dude, can I mute his mic right now? Yeah, you can pull it out for all there's I care. No, <laughs> there's, no, there's no point yeah, in this conversation. Talking about old man TV. Look, I wouldn't fuck with Nick with friends. Please don't fuck with me on Mash. You gonna you gonna ask all the love me some hot lips. you want? He said, "Please, Doc." <laughs> I love me some hot lips. And who was the black guy in Mash? Oh, there was the black uh, guy. Spear Trucker Jones <laughs> was was his actual name on the show. Wow, Todd, even I'm offended by that one, buddy. Uh, hey, wow. I'm just, oh, fact. Thank you, thank you, Corey. Thank you, dude. I, in the movie and on the show, that was his name. Todd, yeah, let's can- I didn't name him that. Let's cancel Bob yes. right now. Spear Trucker Jones. It, and, uh, and but I'm yet, not you about can- canceling. I'm more about punching people in the face who deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll I'll kick him in the goddamn shin right now. Kick him right in the leather cheerio. I feel like this is devolving into a a, a conversation about the 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 up, <laughs> ups and downs of the Jeffersons, just to keep things exactly. Todd and I'll have this conversation after the show. Yeah, what do you what? 
No, so so yeah. two things. Um, sure. You know, the last quarter of the season of the old OG Frazier. Oh, boy. Of course, like, are we not done no, with we're not. This please, is the last please, thing. Please, last thing. From using o- terms like it's OG wrong. when you're talking about Flip Frazier, please. <laughs> and the term Frazier. <laughs> Listen. Um, so the last three quarters of the show, you know Kelsey Grammer directed it, right? Yes. Okay. I'm aware. So they have that asset. In their, they have that arrow in their quiver that he will also be helping direct this. Okay, he he knows the character; he's been playing it for forty some years. So yeah. Also, they have announced that um, Lilith and Roz will be making an appearance back on the show, right? As special guests, they're yeah. not part of the cast. Well, not yet. Look, look, I, 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 I want to hold on. Drive. As as Nick is writing the show, they are part of. I the think cast. I think I speak for myself here and for Todd when I say, thank you. If you're if you're going to demonstrate for me that the show is actually pretty good, yeah, maybe not as good as Frasier, but still good enough to check out, I will check it out. Solid C- All I'm Solid telling C- you minus. is that well, what I've heard, what I've seen, and what I've read isn't worth my time. And I'll tell I'll tell you this: I never watched one episode of Joey. The fucking show after Friends. I watched every episode of Joey, I did and I not. regret every minute I spent I did watching not. that. I did not. But I, I stuck with it long enough <laughs> for it to be embarrassing how long I stuck so with it. So once bitten, twice shy. That's where you're at. Yeah. So maybe this if is my moment. If you're not learning from your mistakes, then maybe this what is, are you doing? You're not ma- growing. You're not evolving. Maybe this is my moment that this you once had. 100%. So, okay. They always pick the wrong character to do the this, this, this sequel off of. I mean, I would watch the Cliff Clavin show. You are 100% right, Todd. Todd Dillon dropping. <laughs> Sitcom science on the show. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's uh, back in 1844. That's what uh, they used to do. Uh, you know, uh, the actual term was uh, mail carrier. Yeah. And as as you know now, uh, what, I can't. I don't know what is dialogue. right. Right. It is a. It is a passable. Uh, if I say, heard I'm, more of it, gonna, right? Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think you're a student of Cheers like you were a student of. Oh of God! Frasier. Oh God! No, no. Yeah. For, first of all, I only made it like four, three or four seasons. But that, that being said, re- that being said, I, I feel it. like you were close. But yeah, you know. if if I were to watch it, it would be re- I'd be spot on. But you know, you're Cliffy. You're, <laughs> <laughs> but you're nothing, uh, Nick Bader, if not a, a student of the game. And uh, if you put your mind to it, I I know you would. Fucking knock the yeah, if I, if I heard it, yeah, yeah, and, and that, that the little bit that I I actually just did was only from the one episode that they showed up on Frasier. <laughs> yep. Which and which, by the way, what's your audience face? members uh, might agree it, it was uh, as well as Corey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Which, by the do, way, do I, Venus Venus do Venus flytrap from WKRP in Cincinnati? Oh my god, what is that? <laughs> I I feel like you and I are the only ones who've seen that show, Todd. <laughs> That's what I'll assign to Nick next time I get him. Oh, Please, uh, Dude, Todd I can't assign me. Love that Todd show. can't assign me anything else. <laughs> Todd's done. <laughs> He's done. Yeah, you get roots next. It'd be next. pretty awesome if he assigned <laughs> you WKRP in Cincinnati just to I- improve your impression listen, of black people. Li- and listen, cups. listen, him and Corey j- love sucking each other off and assigning each other shit. And they just give each other great reviews. Why am I going to ruin a good thing? Let that continue to happen. Let that fucking continue to happen. I'm okay with it. I get history lessons. You get fantastic shows, and you both love it. So keep that up. <laughs> keep wow. that up. I, like I said, I got you. Right. I got your roots, little Alex Haley. Next time, I mean, I, I was assigned. Wow, Harriet that as would well. be a fantastic assignment. <laughs> roots. The miniseries. <laughs> oh, my God, Todd. This was the best thing. A plus. I'm going to stand up out of my chair. This was amazing. Corey, you knocked it out of the park. So fantastic. Like, great. Let's not ruin that. You guys keep fucking going with that. I didn't say that last week. Or not last week, the week prior. He did not. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit the button, Corey. You ready? Sure. TikTok, I, I guess. Sir. TikTok, sir. Are you ready? I guess. <laughs> I <laughs> wasn't too sure what he was going for. No, I, I guess. Well, no, I, I heard your statement that last episode we didn't get to. Like that. oh, yeah. That's the first thing we're going into. All right. 
I love that theme music. Love it. Yep. Love it. And just just so you're aware, clarifying point, we all agree that it should be shorter. <laughs> and we should get through it as fair. quickly as possible. Yeah, to be that, fair, it's every pretty music, short. I think I think just the intro we need to start talking. I don't know. We don't have to shorten every song we have on the show. Yeah, no, I think we do. <laughs> I don't think so. No, especially not the grievances song. That needs to play the whole three. <laughs> <laughs> it's like ninety five seconds long. Oh, dude, I saw this great, Corey. I saw that. So well, you don't need to play it now. I mean, <laughs> you don't even need to play it now. Yeah. Nick's already seen it. Move on. So this first one I got for you guys, I showed you guys the uh, the Metallica drone show. Yep. Uh, a couple episodes ago, I came across this one, and this is almost a little more impressive <laughs> than that guy. Hopefully, backyard. it's to print. <laughs> you know where it is, right? Uh, it looks like Dubai. I don't. Is, is that Dubai? Yeah. It's Dubai's okay. Halloween drone show. So here you guys go. Dude, check that out. That's a. Is that it? It was a little longer. It was approximately <laughs> that, that, that. four seconds. Exactly. He was like holding on I to the building and he was like taking steps into the crowd. I didn't make the video. So There's a little I bit can't. longer one well, that you can it. see. But. Hey, hey f- funny side note. My luggage got lost Hold in Dubai. Hold on. We'll be the judge of that. <laughs> just, say side, just say side note. We'll say funny or not. Toot, toot. <laughs> <laughs> No, I actually I've never mm. I've never spent any time there, but my luggage did get lost there. And my doubloons <laughs> and my bag of diamonds also got lost did, at the how airport. How did it get lost there if you were never there? <laughs> well, I mean, I was there on a trans. I was I was get, catching a different flight in Dubai. I didn't actually spend any time. I was trying uh, to go to Iraq. Ground, much time on the ground. But I had to have a layover in just dirty and Dubai. My, during, yes, during my layover. Uh, my luggage got lost on my way. I, I love that it. now my other two co-hosts are realizing what I've known for years, which is that Todd's living a different kind of a life that we're living. And it, it, <laughs> all we could do is well, like you dream it's of made being... Fun of them. Well, that too. Oh, come on. Okay, so the second thing we could do is just kind of dream of having the same life that Todd Dillon now, has. I think we finally hit that ceiling. Todd said his luggage was lost in Dubai. He wasn't actually in Dubai. No, no, I was, no was. I was I was in Dubai. You, okay, I was you, on a, oh, you, I had a, you had, I had a plane you, change. Okay, you had a layover in Dubai. Yes, I you, did. They you, decided you his never, luggage did not need to follow him you, to wherever he was going from Dubai. How long Dubai. was this layover, Todd? It was it was about six hours, but my luggage actually did not make the flight when I left in six hours. Don't give a fuck about the luggage. Was not on it. Did you stay in the? <laughs> were you just in the airport the entire time? Just in the airport. Just in the airport. Okay, because I didn't know <laughs> we hit our ceiling. Dubai. Is where that's where Todd's riches kind of die out. He's not allowed in the city of Dubai yet. Once he's able to get out of that, air, once he's able to get out of that Dubai airport and actually go into the city and have a good time and and see places like this, then then he's able. Then we can say, "Wow, Todd's really made it." Yeah, exactly. But, 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 I agree. But we, I agree. Hold on. So, so we found with, a ceiling. We with found all the ceiling. chickens and helicopters. You, that that's where you're drawing the line. Dubai? Chickens, we can't, we can't, we can't envy the life of Todd Dillon until it gets to Dubai level? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Gotcha. Well, I stand that, corrected. That, I, that's, I, I, I'm gonna I've to, had my luggage lost in London as well. Does that count? Apparently not. Uh, apparently, it does, it, not unless you had a, had some fish and chips uh, by the Tower of London. <laughs> I did. I had really shitty fish and that's, chips as well. I think I've, I've covered in that. In the airport? <laughs> it's the Fort Lauderdale actually, of Europe, Todd. In the city. In the city, Bob. Okay. That, so, <laughs> I actually left the airport. By Corey's rules, since you left the airport and in the city you had a meal, that counts. Yeah, it counts. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, well, and they lost my luggage. So One, I could be jealous of you on a, on a European trip, but not on a... Uh, not in Dubai. I get, and that makes sense. Like I said, that's why I don't claim Dubai as a stop that I've Hold on. Let's, let's not pretend like anything that he said made sense. But I, 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 I gleaned some knowledge out of it. Can I just ask this? Yep. We're... <laughs> Where were you, Dan? Just for just for my own sanity, where were you coming from, and where were you going that you had a layover in Dubai? Uh, I was going. I know my ending destination was India. I don't know where I was coming. from. Of course, from. it was. Of course, it was India. And uh, I I will t- I will vouch for Todd. Well, in that. There, that there was a period sense. of time where I worked with Todd where he would. Uh, a couple times a year, have to make le- legitimately like a round trip, round uh, a, a circuit. He would have to circumnavigate the globe, and start off, you know, from the states and 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 end up in almost every continent. 
Yeah, I did. I did a trip from Detroit to New York, New York to London, L- London to Narita, Narita to Sydney, Sydney to Melbourne, and I was in the air that week longer than I was on the ground. Yeah, and, and the w- ticket was sounds- the ticket. The ticket was like like almost forty grand. In the this is a true story, and then and at the time the company I was working for had a policy if you flew coach uh, rather than business class, which I would have been entitled to, they would reimburse you fifty percent of the fare if you flew coach because they would save a, a ton of money. And so, literally that week, I was in the air longer than I was on the ground, and the tickets for my flights were because it was a last minute trip. Uh, my tickets were like 40 grand and I got a check back for like 20 grand, 20,000 dollars. And Mary's like, you should fly coach everywhere. <laughs> like never, ever again. I flew like one segment was like 17 hours right next to the shitter in the back of the plane. And I'm like, yeah, I'm never doing this again. Yeah. That's the part you don't think about when you're like, oh man, a check for 20 grand would be, I, I, I how would you, ever it, well, it still down? wasn't worth it. It still wasn't worth it. So were you going from like Mumbai to Dubai? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I flew. So I flew, I was, I flew from Pune to Mm. Mumbai and then Mumbai to do to, I landed in, uh, where was I headed then? I'm trying to think, Oh, actually, you know where I was going? I was actually going to Ireland. That's why I was in because Dubai. Yeah. is in the middle East in Europe. They're near to Europe. That's where I was on my way to. I was on my way to Ireland via from India. That's why I stopped in Dubai. It's a long ass fucking flight. It was very long. All right. And it even sucked even more when I, when I didn't have my shit. (laughs) <laughs> all right but cutting it short at the end of the day Todd still hasn't been in dubai so here we go all right this exactly. is uh this next tiktok is what my nightmares are made out of and why people do this i will never fucking understand so it's called climbing crystal tower nope so he's climbing up the outside of the building. Free climbing. He has no ropes or anything attached to it. Doesn't he have like suction cup shoes? No. no. Those are his hands and feet. His he's barefoot. So he's an idiot. There unfortunately are a lot of people that do this and they stream it and it's Yeah, it makes yeah. him famous. Dude, already is, right there. This is just dumbassery. This is dumbassery. That's, Dude. That's not even that far up on the building, and I'd be shitting myself. Dude, I've got sweaty palms just looking at it. Well, Corey, you couldn't even reach one of the panes. Your sh- your legs are so short. Oh, well, after I stepped on you, Todd, I'd be able to get up there. <laughs> because Todd's so tall. That makes no sense. Taller I'd be than able Corey. to step on him. If- <laughs> Jesus exactly, Christ. he's taller than Corey. <laughs> so yeah, he he keeps going. Oh fuck off! But what? what- so we can fast forward a little bit here, but yeah, he he's obviously look at the pretty, wind, pretty far up there. But what I really want to show you guys because there's a continuation of this video that I was able to find, and I it's, hope it's I hope it's of him falling onto an airbag that they set up beneath him because he's a dumbass. Yeah, I don't know. And then being arrested, yeah, from dude, that he, he'd be right through a fucking airbag. So here here's the final part of the video that this guy posted. And look how high up he is. Yeah. Again, I think uber dumbassery, but at the end of the day, this isn't as hard as actually where you have rock. He knows he's already tested what his hand strength against yeah, very, I, very I, consistent building materials. And it literally, if one of those pieces of building material fell off, not then he he would his family would then sue the company for improper building materials. <laughs> I, I will I will side with Todd on this that these are very sort of repetitive, predictable movements and handholds, and I, I don't I don't think it's I think it's easier than doing free climbing up the face of a of a yeah, yeah but it's okay, also ver- it's it's also vertical completely yeah but it's dumbass but, but, but he's got yeah yeah but rock climbers go hang, rock climbers on, go hang. upside down they have to hold on and, and hang <laughs> upside and down. this is I think I'm with Bob. this guy's got no. I wasn't trying to. Well, make, I was with you. I wasn't trying to make that statement by any means whatsoever. Yeah, rock climbing is hard as shit. This is hard as shit. I don't care either way. This is absolutely fucking crazy to me. That's why I wanted to show you. Dumbassery. Yeah. Why and, are we? Why are we promoting it then? This is dumbassery. Look, at look its at, finest. Look at that camera angle right there. How far down that is. 
That's absolutely insane. And you know what's I, I cool? Mean, about, you know, you know what? You know why it doesn't matter though, Corey. If he I'm, falls right now, you know what? You know what? It doesn't hurt. Well, no, he would never feel that. And unfortunately, he did make it to the top. Um, I, unfortunately, I mean, dude, I again, guys like this. You, you wanted him to fucking just, plummet off the yeah. side. No, he'll. One, somebody else will do it, and somebody will fall. That's the problem with it. I think ultimately, I think again. Not that I could do oh, this in a stretch that. in a million years, and, I, and I'm not diminishing the skill that it would take to do it, but it is pure 100% dumbassery that put himself and other people at risk in the rescue personnel who would have to freaking spatula his wet ass off the fucking concrete if he <laughs> fell. It's freaking, it's dumbassery. And that's yeah, I, I I totally agree, Todd. I, totally I, I, don't, agree. I don't think you're, you're, you're never going to get to like, okay, we've officially run through all of our daredevils like there aren't any more left there's no there's always, always there, going to be there's always going to be a limit to push yeah so yeah and honestly but, you could call it darwinism right if i love yeah, it if, if this was the intent then uh the the herd will thin itself out because yeah you know those genes don't need to be passed on right so this next one I got for you guys. Yes, uh, I have seen this. This is fantastic. This and, and exactly as the quote says, well, it, it asks, why is hockey such a good sport? This is exactly why. A fight is going on, right? and there's two other players standing back, and you can tell they kind of just got into a little bit of a scuffle, but they kind of work things out. And they're, they're kind of giving each other a little hug and a little laugh, but then it takes a turn. So he knocks his stick out of his hand. <laughs> and he starts pushing it away. And, and off we go. For another fight. As, but, as, but I feel like these guys were just laughing through it. Like they, they, I don't know if they were buddies from before, but they, they definitely. So they, they were laughing until that. Ha- that was kind of a laugh. That was not a laugh. That was definitely not, and then it, that's where it took off. But I, but again, they they could have started punching each other, but they never did. Like they're just no, they never they never fully went at it. But yeah. I think Jamie Ben took it a little far there, a little far. <laughs> All right, and I got I got one more for you guys if you got time. <coughs> Always hey, for show you. me. Okay, play a good one. Wow. <laughs> All right, the gauntlet has been thrown. You know what? Here's here's what we're gonna do, Corey. You're gonna play one more. And then right after this, we're going right into airing your grievances. And you're gonna, so, so you're going to get your chance to sp- turn the tables and make sure that Todd has a good grievance. Oh, and now, Todd, now you're fucked because he's ending on a, on a Michael Che. Oh, go fuck yourself, Todd. <laughs> California has become the first state in the country to issue ebony alerts when a black child goes missing. Here with more on this is Colin Jose. <laughs> Michelle. Oh, read the card. Yeah. <laughs> California has become the first state in the country to enact ebony alerts to help find missing, missing black children. And I'll save you some time. They're not with their fathers. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. California has become, I like that we restate it. California has become the first state in the country to issue ebony alerts when a black child goes missing. Uh And hopefully the police find them before I do. (laughs) (laughs) Some rough jokes, Colin. That that was I think that was from Solid. the first first episode um, of the season that they did after the writer strike was over. Yeah, and and I watch it and I remember thinking, I don't know why they're not doing like a back and forth um, because it was literally just that, and then they went back to the regular news where they're each in their own segments, and Che J- never had to read anything that Joe had written, which is weird to me. I don't know why they he would have just changed the format on that one or just yeah. yeah done a like we're just gonna do a thing about jost and then we're done i think i, I think yeah. because a lot of things fall on the 
the cutting room floor, Bob. I think ultimately, yeah. I think that when it works out perfectly, they get they both have that segment because they do right for each other. But it's a live week. show. Um, it's but a yeah, live but show. still lots lots of pitches don't make it. Lots of them. So you're saying that they had uh, done that in in dress and decided between dress and going live that they were going to cut out all the stuff that Michael Che was going to read and just leave the joke. No, stuff. Be, no, 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 no. They cut out. They kept. They kept the segment as long as it normally is, and Joe's jokes for Che to make him look like an idiot did not meet the mark of all the other stuff that they told, and so it just didn't make the cut. Right. So, but you're saying that they determined that before they went live, and they're like, "We're we're just going to read." We're, Correct. Joe's, you're just going to do Che's Correct. jokes. And that's where we're going to stop it. That is that is my assertion. Yes, sir. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> How many licks does it take <laughs> to get to the center? <laughs> Tootsie Pop. A Bob Rankin. Well, from what I've heard, only one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Todd, I hear, I hear you've got one grievance. I do. Only one. So we're wow. going to do a, 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 quick, <laughs> a quick lead in. The Festivus begins with the airing of grievances. There you go. There's your lead in. So, uh, go ahead with your grievance. Well, here's my grievance. How come every time I roll into the strip club, and it's not that often that I roll in, but when I do. That's not what I heard. Well, okay. However much I do or don't, how come it is, as soon as I sit down, passion comes over and is like, would you like a dance? I'm like, I just got here. I need to get a beer. I need to figure out what's on the menu. I need, to, I need to check out the, the, the circumstance, and I haven't seen, seen all the other talent. So my, my grievance is this. Give a brother a second to sit down, chill out, get his bearings before you come over asking for a dance, a lap dance. I just, I'll get to you if I get to you, but I'm just sitting there looking to, to take, it, take it all in before I, get to what I'm, before I get to any of that. So that's my grievance. The clarifying questions. <laughs> clarifying question number one. Yeah. Yes, sir. <clears throat> From your from your grievance, it seems like you and Passion were uh, had been introduced prior to that that descriptive episode in the no. strip club. No, she no she so literally you, you took a I'm walking random to my guess. seat. You're like I think your name is Passion. She's like no. Hey, she goes no nope. She walks up because again I'm just getting ready to sit down. She's like hi, I'm Passion. Do you want a lap dance? Oh no, man. thank you. Right, 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 right. No okay. no thank you. Just got here. Second clarifying. Trying question. to order myself a blue collar mimosa. <laughs> it, it, what, Get my bearings why, about Why me. is this? Why are we just now in 2023, almost 2024, just now getting the first grieve, the first strip club related grievance? I don't know. <laughs> because Todd was just there yesterday. <laughs> Actually, I wasn't. I was. I was I remi- reminded of it. Because- see how quickly Corey uh, ran back <laughs> to make that comment before even zipping up from coming back to the bathroom. I had I, <laughs> these, <laughs> these wireless, His wireless headphones, headphones on. The wireless headphones yeah. are working out for me. Yeah. The only reason why we didn't hear from him earlier is because he was midstream and we would have heard every drop hitting the water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, I, I can just make it back to my to my desk. It'll be, it'll yeah, be I'm fine. like, give, give a guy a chance to kind of get his bearings before you you run up on him and you know try start start uh, applying your wares. You know, give a guy a second. Also, should we put this in the category of um, <laughs> well-to-do <laughs> grievances, where we've we've had helicopter grievances, we've had chicken <laughs> grievances, <laughs> and now we've got strip club grievances. It's just too much money. That's all it is. <laughs> Got too much damn money. Yeah, more money, more problems, as they say. Where can I throw hey, my money? That's all. You got to fuel the econ- You you got to fuel the economy, and you know you know what? One of my favorite movie lines that is truer than true. Hoes got to eat too. <laughs> yeah. Is that from The Great Gatsby? Which movie is that from? <laughs> I think it's from one of the Friday movies. I think it's Winky <laughs> Dink Winky Dinky, Dinky I was, Dog. I was on the fence. Hope has got to eat too. Great Gatsby or fr- Friday, uh, Friday after next. I think the original Friday. Okay, <laughs> it's a it's a tough choice. Tough choice. Hey, Corey, have you seen the original Friday? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've seen all of them. Oh, 
It was worth so a shot. You, you know what this means, Nick. <laughs> What's that? You're, we're not going to have two instances within 10 minutes of each other of Corey running to the mic to give an answer. <laughs> You know what's coming next? He's sleeping all day tomorrow. Cordless microphone on his, <laughs> on his shirt. Oh, God. He's like, it's not going to be enough. And now he's running back to the microphone to get one. I've already got one. an order on one. <laughs> I actually did look that up. Of and course there, you did. There is a way to do it. I, Hold on, bitches. I can't be in the mic in, in the bathroom and hear everything you're saying and not be able to respond. I've Danielle, I've got to buy. I've got to. A lavalier microphone. I'm, I, like, I'm, I already, like, I'm I already, on the Pell. I already own it. It's the Rode Microphone Goes that I have that I could hook up to the mixer. You could, but you're not doing it? No, because we're using it for Instagram Live. <laughs> well, look, I guess now you've got to make the Sophie's choice, right? Is it Instagram Live or is it I get to talk from the shitter? Well, I think you guys <laughs> know my answer. Let's, let's not start that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, speaking of Sophie's choice, let's move on to Nick's existential question of the week. And we're forgetting about the shot. <laughs> That's a lot of running. <laughs> That's more running I've seen you do in a podcast in a long time. Of course. Like, <laughs> well, he got all that exercise on Halloween. He did. He, he realized that he's still got some running left in his body. Oh, my God. Um, I forgot. These these legs could move. So right, I'm going to switch the camera over to Nick and then go put this away. <laughs> so if you guys can give me a second, that'd be fantastic. Gotcha. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, if, uh, if we could do this shot... Um, that is already not very cold. Here we go. Cheers. Cheers, Todd. To Matthew, to Matthew Perry. To Matthew Perry. To hey, Bobby Knight. No, just Matthew Perry. Salancha. <laughs> God. I feel like someone, some swished, stuff, by the way. someone swished that around in their mouth and spat it into oh. mine. Mm, you're welcome. Yep. All right, so this installment of Nick's Existential Question... Let's see here. What food did you eat regularly as a kid that you would not touch now? That's what we want to know. What did you eat food-wise regularly as a kid? I mean, if you want to include drinks, I, I, I'll let that happen. Um, that you don't, you wouldn't touch it now. That's what we need to know. Um, apparently this is history class. Corey, go ahead. I, do you have a question? I do. Well, no, I have an answer. Sorry. In the form of a question. Well, I mean, normally you, people raise their hand. What is macaroni? Yeah. No, you would, you would raise your hand for an answer too. Your no, teachers never did that? No. What was, school did you go to? I was in private school. At, no, I'm just kidding. I was what not is lasagna? <laughs> I was not, no, go ahead. Corey? So, uh, dude. I Lori don't, just shows up. She's like, yes, Corey. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> I you heard, were under the table the whole time? I heard a hand was raised. How'd you hear a hand raised? All teachers can hear that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like dads can hear the thermostat being changed. <laughs> teachers can all hear a hand, hand raised. Raise. Yep. Yeah. Um, dude, I, I don't even know what you would call it except disgusting. Um, it okay. was fried ring bologna. Oh my god! That's what? all. Uh, no, what? Let's move wait, on. Wait, 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 that's wait. all you have to say. <laughs> wait, 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 wait a minute. What say. is ring bologna? The is the ring bologna the one that's pickled? No, no, it's not pickled. It, it's it's literally just regular bologna, but for some reason it's put into. That's the only like, way I can eat bologna is fried. <laughs> no, I I do again, and I love I, normal fried bologna. I'm completely okay oh with. Oh my god! But it, fried ring bologna was in the form of like two sausages that linked together. Uh, I don't know. If, like you guys don't know what quiche is. They're blood sausage. Yeah. Uh, the 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 form the form of it. This is going down the shitter real quick. So ring bologna comes in that form of like the shitter. The the two sausage links to, together looks like a shitter. And my mom would cut it up into pieces. So is it kind of like a smaller version of like a sausage pinwheel? Basically, yeah. But just in a circle. Yeah. What is a sausage pinwheel? Sausage pinwheel, you can buy those at the store all the time. It's like the, it's like just Not one giant. Not that I go to. Nick. One, one giant. Yeah, you're gonna have to go to the more. Does Whole one. Does Whole Foods have one of those? Um, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't dumb it. Or down the Kwanzaa Castle. I go to Plum Market. Um, but no, you can, <laughs> you, you go in. It goes like in a circle into the middle instead of separating it into individual sausages. But this yeah. is just a circle. Cool. Yeah, it's it's, yeah, it's like, it's I like, like know what you're saying. If you were to put like. <laughs> <laughs> If you were to put like two two big wings together, 
That's, yeah. that's that's what it is. So I was like, what's, what's, all, what's all this math on the show tonight? Is it, is it called docking? <laughs> no. It's not sausage, called docking. sausage docking? The it's fact a, that you know that says a lot, Todd. It's a perpetual but circle. That's, a, that's an episode title runner-up right there. <laughs> so I still like elephant socks. <laughs> everyone loves elephant socks. Everyone loves it. You don't have to brag about it. This is, so, I said this is number two. So she would just slice that off, fry that, which that in itself I would be okay with. Yeah. Then <laughs> she would add onions again. Who is doing this? Right, my well, mom. Well, okay, my mom. Get to the, where was the bridge too far for you? Dousing it <laughs> in ketchup. Oh my god! What? what do, hold on. What's the matter? You don't like sausage and ketchup? First of all, it's not sausage. It's, bo- it's bologna. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Bologna oh, and ketchup. Fuck. No matter what, it's again. I don't, I'm not a big bologna guy of any means. And in fact, now I think I've, I already I've zeroed in on where I'm going to. It's kind of weird because I thought Todd Dill was a huge ketchup guy. Ketchup. Todd. Todd. I'm telling you, buddy. It was disgusting. It again. Fried bologna alone. I I can do. I can get. I can get along with. The onions, I can definitely, I can definitely do. No, but then, but then pouring it into a bowl, like literally, like in a bath of ketchup, not like just a little bit of ketchup, like it was soaked in ketchup. Oh, really? That was oh, the sauce. It, it was, yeah, it, it was, because, like, it was almost like it was, it was, it was, it, ketchup, If I could, I'd, fi- I'd file, I'd lodge a complaint. Ketchup That's against the law. Ketchup was the gravy to this oh, recipe, dude. Oh, okay, this how, is oh, how just, old were you? Uh, between uh, this one on from the ages of like can, can six you please to- read the question one more time yeah yeah and just just so we're all clear there uh by the definition there is nothing recipe about what just transpired there is no Word. recipe about taking yeah, a I, circle I, of I, bologna I'm feeling, i've forgotten the question now so. heating it up and then dousing it in a pool okay, of ketchup. It, I'm not. I'm not saying it's a. No, no. It's to your. It's to your defense. Uh, I, yeah, it and was to your mom's insult. <laughs> it, it, um, so love the Corky's question, mom, but I got. I got. I got to give her some grief on this one. Oh man, I love Corky, but no, that that is. Uh, it, it and and again, it was something they they had as kids that apparently they loved, that she thought we would love it. Um, but the everyone. Food. Sorry, yeah, read the question again. Just, yeah, just so you're aware, I would call CPS based on what you just told me. <laughs> I would right, hope what's so. What's the question? So the I'm, question. I got a dial, dude. I'm like, get right and hit send. What did you? What food did you regularly eat as a kid that you wouldn't touch now? Regularly. So did you regularly eat that? Yeah, dude. This was like a weekly meal. It's a staple. So every week you hated it? Or, or We did all you... did. Oh, no, okay. no, no, hold on. Well, but that's you... the distinguishing thing of the but question. But it kind of. It kind of leans into the fact that, and I guess it doesn't necessarily specify because it's just saying you regularly ate it. It didn't say that you loved it. But I was guessing that it was something that you liked. No, and, no God, no. Something never eat again. No, I, yeah, I, I, would ne- I would never ever eat this again. No, I know, I know the part of that you wouldn't eat it now. But my interpretation of the question, which is not necessarily means it's, it's law. Ooh, something we liked when we were younger. This, but this this says now. what did you regularly eat? So it's uh, up. Okay. No, okay. no, no, no. It's you're correct. I'm incorrect. Because this says what did you regularly eat? It did not say what did you regularly eat that you liked that you no longer like. It says what did you true. regularly eat? So you're on board with it. I am not. So that's a good answer. Yeah. Great so, answer. So yeah, I'm I'm not gonna change it now. I, I do not but, no, corky. But, Bad on you, <laughs> dude. And and you guys all know I, I love my mom to death. She's done so much for for me and, oh, and yeah. everyone in our family. She's but amazing. The, there it turns out she's to, a crap. Listen, cook at listen TNT. There, there doesn't have to be any boilerplates. She's a great person. That's yes. a shit fucking meal, dude. Yeah. It, and it yes. was, yeah. It, the, well, the, the ketchup. Was I've the, never had it, so I can't really say. You don't, dip, Bob. <laughs> you never. <laughs> no, no, but you can't. I can bubble. say, and I've never Bob, had it, Bob. Hang on, hang on. Uh, yeah. The the what I just gave you, yeah. As far as how it's cooked, yeah. You can't honestly say that even without having it, that sounds disgusting, and you wouldn't even want to try it. So so I uh, I've reached what I'm told uh, by people old enough to be Todd Dillon that is an advanced age. That uh, nice try. You gotta kind of you gotta be open to try everything. No. So, you know no, I, mean? I, I can't. If really, it doesn't make sense, you don't really have to try it. it. If uh, if I haven't tried it, it okay. no, no, no. Yeah, that way, no. if I've tried it and it sucked, then I can legitimately feel confident in telling you that you, no. it sucks 
and you should never give that to me again. Okay. Mo- no. Most 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 chefs, yeah. not not that chefs are anywhere near what you just said, Corey. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no, but, I, I I get that. But most most chefs would say, at least try it one time. That's all you got to do. Yeah. If you hate it, you that, hate that's it. That's my philosophy. If you hate it. But I've had kids no. and I, I didn't I, that's some things just philosophy. don't go together. I, some I, things just I, don't go together. Todd, Todd and I are probably the biggest foodies on this show. And I would say this. It's not uh an in-depth um very involved recipe that you're like, "Oh, well the flavor profile of these levels of flavor flavors may be hit maybe hitting at a different point on on your tongue that you're not really used to and you would definitely have to try this." No, we we can we can surmise that deep fried uh, ring bologna with acidic, uh, you know, waves of ketchup is not going to be uh, appealing exactly. to the palate. So yeah, no, and, and exactly. this is one of the few things that I can say I don't need to try. I would certainly try it because I would try all food before I give a firm answer. No, but and yeah, it, no, it's going to be disgusting. Again, I'm right there with you guys. This is something again. You, my mom's made plenty of great stuff that I I'll still eat to this day, but. The fried ring bologna and and then the the ketchup bath that yeah, the it took, bath. It, yeah, it was so bad idea. And and like I think Callie's the only one in in my our family, my middle sister, still eats it. Keegan and I are to despise it, and even well, when my even I have when a doctor da- in Dubai who can help Callie with her problem. Well, once you can actually get into <laughs> Dubai, then you can uh, talk about that, but. Even my dad, like you, and, and she'd always make a side of mashed potatoes with it. The only way to stomach this meal was to just put all the mashed potatoes on top of that ring bologna and just mix it together and just be like, okay, here we go. Yeah. I'm going to have like to get that ring bologna this mystery down. meat under my pile of potatoes and you ketchup. Need, you need something really flat and a base to kind of suck up all that acid. I mean, oh my yeah. God, I can't even imagine. That 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 doesn't, I mean, that 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 sounds irresponsible to me it really does <laughs> it sounds extremely irresponsible I, it doesn't even sound lazy it sounds irresponsible and again dude like you said this was something that i i know she got from like her her parents or when she was a kid and like you know it was Corey. if you had said like um you know she she puts it in an egg wash and puts a breading on it and then deep fries it and then covers it in a marinara with some parmesan or something i'd be like okay maybe Corey, can you make that for me next weekend maybe. That actually doesn't that sound too bad. Sounds, that sounds pretty good. Maybe. It still sounds pretty shitty. It maybe. sounds like a freaking attempt to cover up the shittiness, though, with some Exa- real cooking. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But when you say that yeah. you're putting a condiment. When you start with ring bologna, you've lost. When, when, when you're saying that you, you're taking a condiment and, and inappropriately. Uh, Making it a sauce. Yeah. <laughs> it would be like saying, uh, hey, uh, my mom made us all these. Uh, all these, uh, all this pasta noodles, and uh, we just we just ladled on the ranch dressing right on top of those pasta noodles, and then we added green olives. It, it is, and it was so good. Oh my god! Like stop no, it! No, I like everything <laughs> no. you said, but all together, horrible. Exactly. I hate it that you just did that to me. I hate that. I don't like this question. And Nick, you should be banned from the airways for even saying what you just said because I, I like, like all of those things, but that sounds shit. Yeah. I feel like Ty should, should go next. Yes, he should. Well, my, Corey's made my life really easy. So the same sim, similar things, things I'll never, ever have Ring again. Bologna. So just, just so everyone's aware, just so everyone's aware, re- if people are just uh, tuning in, just so everyone's aware, the question, the existential question is, what did you regularly eat as a child that you wouldn't touch today? Corey's was there you go. deep fried ring bologna in a pool of ketchup. And rightfully gravy. so, my friend. Ketchup, ketchup gravy. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, Ty. Yeah. So, my, mine is, uh, and, and this is, Nick, you have to, you'll, you'll you really love this because I don't have any clarifying questions because, yeah, my, as soon as Corey said that, I'm like, oh, yeah. The thing that made my mom stop making my lunches for me was bologna sandwiches. Uh, my mom would make a bologna sandwich on white bread with mayonnaise, not Miracle Whip. Actually, she alternated, but either way, it didn't matter. And a slice of American cheese. And I think that, that is the most disgusting thing on God's green earth. Bologna 
is disgusting all by itself, not cooked. Thank you. Uh, but bologna sandwich on white bread with American is like you're stacking on more and more insult to injury. And then the only thing that's a close second that was regular a regular part of my childhood was at some point in my life, I think I had a small sliver of uh, uh, it's, what's it called? Uh, liverwurst. Ugh. And uh, and I'm like, oh, this isn't bad because I think it reminded me of other uh, welfare and uh, <laughs> and re- de- uh, depression era foods like uh, Vienna sausages. But Spam. my mom then yeah. uh, my mom made me liverwurst and Miracle Whip sandwiches. Oh my god! On what? white bread, That's- and those two things, those bologna sandwiches with American cheese and liverwurst sandwiches. <laughs> With just white bread and Miracle Whip were regular parts of my. And here's the thing, my mom would send me to school with for lunch with that for lunch, and then literally about three months into my sixth grade year, I think it was, I would normally throw those out and then either beat people up or figure out a way to earn enough money to buy whatever was on the school menu for cash. Uh, but then what I would do is, but I, and I was throwing them out, but then I was afraid that someone was going to tell, Hey, someone's throwing out good food. And so mm. I started stockpiling them in my lunchbox. And, uh, my mom caught me one day when I had like 13 bologna and liverwurst sandwiches in my little Tupperware lunchbox. Uh, and she busted me before I was able to throw them away because she happened to come home for work early one day. And then she stopped making my lunch forever. But I was so so thankful because, once again, I never, ever had to have a liverwurst sandwich or a bologna and American cheese sandwich. So those are my – those are two things that I had very often as a child that are horrible. I believe that I should – if I didn't love my mom so much, I'd I'd have her prosecuted. Are you asking for reparations for these sandwiches? I – you know, she – here's the weird – here's the weird thing. My mom – was an is an amazing cook. She inspired you so much with was, goodness. And then you changed to is. Well, she doesn't cook that much anymore. But <laughs> I, this woman did so many good things. But what she tortured me with when I was a child, criminal. criminal. So, so I'll say this: we got a shot in front of us. Let's do this first, uh, Todd. If you got one, uh, pour it up. Well, give me a second, and I'll pour it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. In the meantime, because you know what I'm drinking. Like in, in the mean, you know what I'm drinking. Mean, in the meantime, the thing that I will say is this: the excuse that um, you know we were uh, borderline welfare, or we didn't have a lot of money, and liverwurst and bologna, and this is not a dig towards Todd, but like everybody, that, I feel like it is though. No, it's not. In, in, yeah, in it feels like you're making fun of black like people. I feel like. Why don't you like black people, Nick? I feel <laughs> this, this, this. This is why I keep assigning you movies I've, like I, Harriet. I was just gonna did say, did you I've, watch Harriet to the end? I've lined myself. You did watch Harriet. I know he didn't. Five movies. <laughs> Roots no, is coming. I think we see a commonality here with the bologna. <laughs> bologna is the problem. Yes. So that's poor people but, food. But but guess what? I disagree. Guess what? Bologna was fantastic. First of all, let's do this no. shot. Cheers. Salute, Solancha, and Nastrovia. I would be willing to bet that it's um, someone that's just uninformed, as opposed to doesn't have a lot of money, because Todd Dillon. I'll tell you this, it probably only made it, it probably only took me an all altogether maybe two dollars and fifty cents to make that fucking wonderful rice that you ate. And that was fucking delicious. It was. And that's a fucking cheap ass meal, but that's someone who knows how to fucking put flavors together oh, and cook. Although wait, hold on a second. Mm-hmm. You are a little bit off in your your price estimation because I was price. gonna say the herbs of herbs de, de Provence. Yeah. That's like that's like a six dollar spice, bro. Yeah, but you're not using a shit ton of that. Yeah, yeah, but you got to buy it up front. The upfront cost is very high. Okay, so it's probably six dollars or more to buy a, a loaf of bologna to cut it up. <laughs> hold, on, <laughs> hold on, hold on. I think that they bologna gave bologna away the back in the day, which is why I had so much of it. I think they gave that away with the welfare cheese. When you're using two tablespoons of herbs de Provence. And if you really wanted to make it yourself, you could probably I'm not get sure it anyone has ever used the words Herbe de Provence and bologna in the same sentence. <laughs> no, they shouldn't. Before. We're, we're about to make a new That's why this podcast is headed for stardom. You've, you've got a predominantly rice-based meal 
that actually tastes good and is very cheap to make. So, Delicious. Yeah. And, and, and so, almost nutritious. <laughs> so, almost. and you did say, what, didn't you say Mary liked it? Oh, yeah, she loved it. <laughs> yeah. Although that's not a that's not a high bar. Mary's Polish. I mean, ultimately, those motherfuckers never put a piece of salt or a fucking stitch oh, of pepper oops. in oh, one damn. You thing ain't ever. lying about that, buddy. <laughs> yep. I went to fucking Polish <laughs> village. Was gravy for many dishes. <laughs> I went to Polish village and I'm like, I've never had so much delicious food that's had uh, absolutely no fucking seasoning on it in my life. <laughs> We're a simple people. You, <laughs> you know, it's, so. it, actually, no, no. Here and actually, here's the weird thing about that. For simple people, Mary and I actually had the opportunity when we were, when we were at Oktoberfest a couple of years ago to mm-hmm. go to Poland for a weekend, and we went to Gdansk, Poland, and the food was spectacular. And again, while it was not, there was no Cajun seasoning or anything like that, the food actually did have seasoning to it and was very good. So I don't know what the fuck happened during the translation from Poland to the Americas. But the Polish people I know, they forgot all about salts and other seasonings. And they started boiling their foods. Yeah, and, Todd, uh, is, is Gdansk <laughs> close to Dubai? Does that count? Does that get? It is not. It's close water? to the Black Sea. It's right on the Black Sea. And by the way, anybody uh, out there, if you're looking for an incredible vacation destination, highly recommended. Recommend. Fabulous place. Yeah, because yeah. Todd, because we have evolved as a culinary society from the 1800s up until this point, but unfortunately, when all of our ancestors brought recipes over here like at at the beginning of the United States it probably was bare bones and impoverished and it was it was you know let's do the least amount to feed the most people and so well, i think there's a i think there's another thing too i think mm-hmm. i think you're spot on nick and this isn't this i'm actually going to add just one little extra layer of flavor yeah. plus i think not for nothing in every great society there were shitty cooks and and I think that my and again, oh, this God. isn't knocking my wife's family, but I mean, the fact that they never ever even knew what the fuck salt was, it feels like they just they weren't they weren't like the best cooks on the Polish planet <laughs> back in the day. And again, they made some dishes that people. And again, that's the funny thing: we all have dishes that aren't very good that we love because our parents did them that way, and it's what we were groomed on. It's like Vegemite for the. South Africans and Australians. Uh, it's the most horrible. I'm not going to sit here, ever. mate, while well, you talk about Vegemite. Vegemite is the worst thing ever on God's green earth. It's what we call a vegetable paste, and it's good on bread <laughs> and toast. It's fucking horrible. It's absolutely delicious. And horrible. No, I've never had veg. I've never had Vegemite. My my ancestors or my relatives uh, were big on Vegemite, but uh, I will I've, send you some, Nick. No, I, it doesn't yeah. sound like anything I would like. Did you go? You, I have not. You won't I, like it. You should go. But I want. But I don't want. You, I don't want you to age one more day without having some. So I'm going <laughs> No, Vegemite sounds <laughs> disgusting. There's also uh, in like England and stuff. They have like a meat paste, which just doesn't <laughs> sound appetizing at all either. Um, so the thing that I had as a child um, that I wouldn't have today, uh, I think it would be, and this is an unpopular opinion. Um, specific to my palate, but um, pork loin, or like shame, pork, what shame? Pork, you don't like you don't like a good pork loin? Pork loin, pork roast. Yeah, you can you can fucking because people it up. dry it out. No, 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 no. Yeah, you're no, not no. cooking it right. No, 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 no. I've had some fantastic pork. Let's just pork loin. Listen, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. This is this is like a four letter word for people. Pork for, what, for whatever or re- loin for whatever reason. Which four letters are you talking about? When you speak of this, people get very offended. They get very upset. Yeah, yeah. I don't know which and, four letters you're talking and about. And the first, okay, a four letter word is a swear word typically. I don't know wh- which one, pork or loin. Which is the four letter word? We're, we're talking about pork loin together being a four letter word itself. Well, it's two four letter words, but. Okay. <laughs> thank, thank you, Bob. And yeah, the thank department. you, Mr. Math Science Guy. But this is a, yeah, this is a clearly a science math problem. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, no. So, so, call back to the previous episode, the, everybody. the the funny The funny thing about it is that people get really upset. They're either on one side or the other, and the first thing that's always said since I've been a kid is always, "Well, you haven't had my pork loin." You have not, yeah. You you've had it wrong. You I, haven't I'm had just, I, you I'm haven't just had it the I've, right I've way. I've had 
fantastic pork M- loin. My mom has told me many times, she's like, you, you, you haven't had it the way I made it. And I'm like, I grew up having it the way you made it. What are you talking about? I've had it the way other people have made it. I've had, it's not, I don't like the consistency and I don't like the flavor. It's a mixture between like chicken and beef. I and get it, it. It just, it doesn't do anything for me. You can, you can dress it up in whatever you want. You can put spices on it. You can marinate it, whatever. It does nothing for me. I, I've never liked it. And my mom, you would think that I insulted our heritage for the past 700 years. You, yeah, you may have. She, she's like, I just don't understand. It's deli-. I'm like, no, it's not. I don't like it. it there's nothing about it that's good. It, it's like fucking seasoning up a turd. Like, that does nothing for me. Pork loin, pork roast, whatever you want to call it, with any seasoning, well, doesn't look- taste good. The great part about these lists are that it's very subjective. Yeah. Right? The thing that you may be saying sucks and it and it tastes horrible. There there may be uh, a dozen people who are listening to this. I could be optimistic here. Yeah. Uh, saying that they, <laughs> they, that they love that. Exactly. Right. One, fantastic. The whole show. And, and the one is you. That's fine. Yep. It doesn't matter. Uh <laughs> We we may have all, our our entire viewing and listening audience may love the thing that you're talking about. And they may be like, oh, listen, that's just all. It's just it. You don't like it. I get mm-hmm. it. Yeah, I love it. That's what makes it so great because it's completely subjective. And so the w- the way I look at it is this: um, let's culinarily speaking, let's separate flavor and good food from nostalgia don't get it twisted do not do not try and get it confused that just because you were raised on something that means it's delicious i agree with that i understand that a lot of food our closest sense tied to memory is a sense of smell and our closest sense of that is also tied to another sense Smell is to taste. And so a lot of times there are foods that we taste slash smell or scents that we smell slash taste that tie us back to our childhood. And we don't necessarily always, it's not always an amazing thing, but it's nostalgic. Um, That being said, I don't think pork loin, pork roast is a horrible thing. There's a lot of people out there and chefs that make it that are, it, it's, I'm sure it's fantastic. I've had it a lot of different ways and it's something to do with. That's how I know that what you've made. The texture. Great. People the, are like, I'm, sure I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Nick. Yeah. There's just uh, no, something, I'm, I'm, something with I'm the texture board. and the flavor of pork that doesn't lend itself to me at all. So, so like you're not a fan on of the loin. Chops. The loin I think is no. the worst in that you have, it's the, it's the leanest part of the pork. At the end of the day, as a cook, I'm sorry, Corey, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, you're good. Uh, I was going to say the one thing with that, I, I, and I, again, as a guy who loves to cook like like Nick, you're 100 percent right. The the challenge with pork loins and even the pork roasts is often there's only fat at the periphery and literally no bone, and those are the things that impart the best flavors to meats. And so, oh man, if you're a a meat purist. I imagine that, that, but but again, like I said, I, I've actually found, and, and, I, and it's, I just chuckled, I put into the, the chat, I just purchased, uh, f- Costco had like the buy like 18 pork <laughs> roasts uh, mm. in one package, and I like bought it because I'm Please like. Please don't send one to I'm, my house. Please don't. No, 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 but you know what? Here's the funny thing. I will do a roast because Mary, I'll do one of them as a roast for Mary, but what I found, my favorite piece to thing to do with that is to make like is I've had a chili uh where you barely you you only know it's pork because of the texture but if you do a chili with like a, a green chilies and uh, white beans mm-hmm. pretty amazing and so I think you're you're spot on there's probably a thing that you might find that you like but I'm with you I, I get I'm op- why I'm you could say that I'm open to it and so and it's so weird because there are uh, we've got two hands here. One hand is holding something like pork roast. The other hand is holding something like pork, like bacon. And it's like, yeah. oh my god, how do I love something like ribs, pulled pork, bacon, things Bones like and that? Fat. You know what I mean? And, uh, Bones and uh, fat, baby. Ham, ham, ham bone, fucking infused soups, 
you know, Bones cheddar ham fat. soup, you know, amazing, amazing flavor. And you have something like pork loin that tastes like nothing. And it's like, yeah, because people, people overcook it. They don't. So one of the things and not for nothing, one of the things that really good cooks do is they brine those cuts of meat that are going to dry out and have texture without flavor. And again, there's a way to, there's a way to beat the system uh, because those are premium cuts. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm with you, dude. I, I, I love it. I, I think that'll be my, be, will be my mission. I don't think I can redeem Corey with the ring baloney. But my mission will be yeah, to make you can. A, there's no, yeah, there's no coming back from that. Yeah, sorry, man. No, right, but, Bob, but, what is yours? No. All right, everybody, th- thank you for joining us for Schnozcast. We'll see you next time. On behalf of Corey, Nick, and Todd, this is Bob saying we'll see you next time. Peace out. <laughs>